This is part one in my three-part series about design cycles when working on glass circuit boards. This is more of an introduction video kind of showing what I'm doing and a problem. The next video is showing how I respin them, how I actually print glass circuit boards. And the last one is showing how I populate and retest. So if you'd like the introduction and to see how this all goes, just keep on watching. If not, click one of the other videos. So I've, uh started trying to print these glass circuit boards again and I'm trying to print single layer ESP8266 designs. If I can uh, get that in focus there. So there's a little ESP8266 and it's all on a single uh, single layer glass circuit board. And I have it so when it first connects up, zoom out here a little bit, If I apply power, like this, it lights up a light right there, and whenever it connects to the network in my house, my laptop upstairs is sending a message telling it to turn off. So I know that it's working. And I have it hooked up to five volts going through this little regulator right here. Right there. But there's one problem. Unlike normal, when an ESP-266 connects, it should only be drawing a couple milliamps, about 70, uh, unless it's in power save mode, in which case it's a lot less. For some reason it's drawing a lot more power. And I've noticed this in the single layer ESP8266 designs. So I'm going to try to desolder some caps some places and resolder them and see if I can get it any better. I'm just going to try to pre-warm the board because I have uh, sometimes destroyed these boards when I just take a soldering iron and just go jam it right onto those pads. But, you know, I preheat the board so it doesn't have quite as much risk of that. And I have my soldering iron turned down to 464 degrees. Um, and that's because the uh, I'm using bismuth solder paste on here. So I don't have to have uh, my soldering iron up at Hades temperatures. So I'm just preheating. And now I'm going to just, I'm curious, if I desolder this capacitor, let's depower briefly. So I desolder this capacitor right here. So now it's desoldered. So now, once that, that's desoldered, let's uh, hook it up. 135. Ah, it's a little bit less. That's interesting. I wonder why that capacitor doesn't seem to help. Ooh, went back up some. Okay, so that didn't have very much of an effect. Let's uh, let's try a couple of. Just gonna solder this one back on. Actually, you know what? I'll solder this one somewhere else. Let's see, where does a good spot for this look like? I'll uh, say, let's just to solder this one actually. Let's go have fun with this, willy nilly. This is, we're just gonna learn some things. So that was a 10 microfarad cap up there. That's a 0.1 microfarad. Let's see if it still works. still works and it went back up to around 140 yeah this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a long night well no amount of tinkering and playing with little itty bitty wires and anything else and trying to ground out different ways to ground and different capacitors and anything else is ever gonna seem to make this read anything other than 140 wonder if there's something wrong with my design. Guess I'll go check that. Okay, I am thoroughly confused right now because there's that ESP8266 right there. And I've taken out a bunch of the external components I thought were necessary, like some jumpers to shorten up the ground rail and some other stuff. And it just doesn't care. It doesn't care how awful the signals are. It doesn't care how awful all the power grains are. Power, ground, whatever are. It doesn't, doesn't care. I put in like a hundred microfarad capacitor for it and a, a couple tens and a one and a point one. It doesn't care. I have a point one and a ten on the power rails and that's it. That's it. 10.1 microfarads. That's all it needs. How? How? All of this complicated engineering I put into this, all this effort, and well, guess what? The part just works better than I could ever have imagined. I guess that's just kind of what happens. 
I've even went as far as trying to replace the ESP8266, but it it's still drawing 130, 140 milliamps. I just I don't I don't understand why it's drawing so much, and I don't understand why I can't do anything to break it or or improve it or 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 anything. It, I mean, it's it's just chirping away. Look at that. Look at that. I'm like several rooms away from my uh from my router and it's it's connected nice solid sitting at 61 db how how expressive how do you make this magical chip that does magic stuff with with it it's a single layer board this is insanity it's just a glass circuit board and and your part just keeps performing better than expected in all the situations expressive this is just this is just unreasonably good. How have you built this? I guess I guess I should demonstrate a little bit more about what this can do. Like I can go over here and I can comment that out and I can go make it display colors. Look at this. Look at that. It works. It's pretty. All those wonderful colors coming off those LEDs. Little little chip right there. These PDT66 driving those LEDs all on a single layer circuit board. How? You, you, this is just. I don't. I don't. I don't understand. I just learned something. I just learned something awful. So. The XP DC DC pin on the SPD266 is a special GPIO that comes up and is driven to 3.3 volts. In my design, it was grounded. I was actually using it to, uh, to route to the power plane. This is the new design where it is no longer connected. See that pin? Not connected to ground anymore. This happened to me once before with an AVR where I connected one of the pins to ground and it was a high current pin and it literally desoldered itself from the board. Now that I've corrected it, when the ESP8266 comes online, lights up that little green LED there, before it connects it draws about 102 milliamps. Then, once it connects and gets uh, all settled in, which it should do in a moment here, there it is goes into low power mode where it uses significantly less power. So this is a little bit more like it. I can actually uh, go over here and I can uh, turn off the LED. Oops, that's pinging. Go over here and I can turn off the LED. Hold on here. Come on, let's try rebooting it. There we go. Now that the LED is off, it uses less current. And if I stop sending its stuff for a little bit, the SP goes into this nice little low power mode. Look at that. Wonderful. Anyway, so it turns out that my problem had nothing to do with fancy RF stuff or anything like that. It simply had to do with me needing to change my code to put a uh, put the GPIO 16 into read input mode, which prevents it from trying to drive the output. Wow, I feel like an idiot. One of the other kind of crazy things I did want to mention was that despite this being several rooms away from the router, and, uh, well, this thing just has a random piece of wire I hooked up to it right here for the antenna. This is just literally a random piece of wire. It works just fine. And it's got a pretty decent RSSI. Right there, let's see. Negative 57, 5860, somewhere in there. Then, just to show how insane this chip is, let me see if I can do this all with one hand. Whoop. I tried desoldering. Now, there's no antenna. There's none at all. Meanwhile, the sp 266 yeah, sure the signal has gone down, but it's still performing just fine. Just fine. How? 
How does this thing work? I love the ESP-8266. This was part one, and I've shown you how I found the problem, but unfortunately since this problem exists underneath of the chip, it is difficult at best to try to resolve without a respin of the board. So I'm going to show you guys how I do respin the boards when I find a problem like this. It really doesn't take that long.